let's talk about mechanical advantages or mechanical disadvantages. Let's go back to our seesaw analogy and let's say that we are going to examine two forces, one on either side of our pivot point. And those forces are going to be some perpendicular distance away from our axis of rotation or our pivot point. Another way in which we can quantify our torque is going to be the force times the perpendicular distance. Previously, we said it was going to be the perpendicular force times the entire distance. Another way in which we can examine that same idea is to say that we are going to look at the force times that perpendicular distance. If our angular acceleration is zero, then we can say that torque A is going to be equal to torque B. Substituting in the equation that the force times the perpendicular distance is equal to the torque on both sides of the equation, we now have force A times perpendicular distance A equals force B times perpendicular distance B. If we now manipulate our equation to move the perpendicular distance B to the other side of the equation, we now have force A times the perpendicular distance A divided by the perpendicular distance B is going to be equal to the force B. Now let's say that force A is our input force. Force B will end up being our output force. How much output force we get for a given amount of input force is going to be determined by this ratio here between the two perpendicular distances. This is referred to as the effective mechanical advantage. Let's say that the two forces were equidistant apart. Let's just give each of those values equal to 1. Well, that would tell us that 1 divided by 1 is equal to 1, so the effective mechanical advantage here for force A would be 1. That would mean whatever force we put in on the left-hand side of our pivot point is what we're going to get out on our right-hand side of our pivot point. Now let's say that the perpendicular distance A is twice as far away from that pivot point as is the perpendicular distance B. Now we have a ratio of 2 to 1. That means we are going to get an amplification of the force out of our lever. So however much force we put in at A, we're going to get twice the amount of force out at B. Similarly, what would happen if the perpendicular distance of B was twice as far away from the pivot point as the perpendicular distance A? Now that effective mechanical advantage of force A is going to be equal to 1 half. That means our output force is only going to be half of what our input force is. In other words, we're going to be at a mechanical disadvantage, and we're not going to get as much force out of our lever as we put into our lever. And again, I hope everybody can appreciate that if we go back to thinking about the wrench. With the wrench, if we needed to create greater torque, we just applied that force at a greater distance from the axis of rotation. In essence, that's giving us a larger effective mechanical advantage. Let's take a look at two common everyday devices that use this idea of mechanical advantage. On the left-hand side, we have a crowbar. You are going to apply a force on that crowbar at F1. The perpendicular distance from that force to the pivot point of the crowbar is equal to the perpendicular distance 1. The output force we're going to get from that crowbar is F2. And the perpendicular distance to that output force is going to be D2. Note that the larger D1 compared to D2 means that we are going to have a mechanical advantage and the amount of force that we put into the crowbar is going to be amplified to the amount of force that we get out of the crowbar. On the right hand side, we have a wheelbarrow. We can think that the force that we are going to apply to the wheelbarrow is going to be at the handles, again at F1. The weight of whatever we're moving is going to be located somewhere around the center of the wheelbarrow, and that force is going to be F2. Once again, we put ourselves in mechanical advantage because D1 is going to be larger than D2. And therefore, we are going to need to provide less force at F1 in order to lift up the weight at F2. 
In future lessons, we are going to examine the whole idea of mechanical advantage as it applies to our muscles. But for right now, I would just like you to get the concept down.